Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel DeLuca, and I'm a movement disorders neurologist at uh, Washington University in St. Louis. First, I would like to thank the organized committee for inviting me to give this uh, lecture on a topic that I'm very excited about, which is MSA Centers of Excellence. And in this uh, lecture, I'll be discussing some topics, including the initial developments and the call for action for MSA Centers of Excellence. I have no disclosures relevant to this talk. So just as a very brief introduction, and I'm pretty aware that the audience already knows a lot about MSA, so I'll skip most of the details, but MSA, as we know, is a neurodegenerative disease with a broad range of symptoms. It is uh, still considered a rare disease with a prevalence around 3.4 to 4.9 per 100,000 population in the United States. Here is some of the symptoms associated with multiple system atrophy. And the main goal of showing this picture is just to demonstrate how broad are the different symptoms in MSA and that they extrapolate just the neurological symptoms as we know. Uh, it's obvious that patients can have Parkinsonism, cerebellar features, pyramidal signs, but beyond that, they also have the autonomic dysfunction or possible sleep disorders such as RBD or Strider, as well as involvements in the cardiac system with orthostatic hypertension, syncope, and sexual dysfunction, as well as uh, depression, anxiety, as I mentioned before. So it just shows uh, how many symptoms can be impaired in MSA and how important it is to have more physicians than just simply a neurologist helping a patient with multiple system atrophy. When we're talking about the care of a patient with multiple system atrophy, there are quite a lot of challenges, both from a patient perspective, but also from a physician and healthcare perspective. From a patient perspective, MSA is a rare disease. Therefore, it might be difficult to find neurologists or any other type of physicians that know how to diagnose MSA or even to manage the symptoms of multiple system atrophy. And because of that, most patients are restricted to urban areas and to get the care that they need for multiple system atrophy, they might have to drive long distances a few hours depending on the state that you are located at. There is also quite a lot of difficulty navigating the system. We know that, uh, especially in places like the US, it can be quite difficult to understand the multiple appointments, uh, the billing part, the financial burden, and it becomes quite difficult to navigate all these referrals and all these multiple pieces and steps needed in the care of someone with multiple system atrophy. As we know, there is no available cure or even disease-modifying therapy, which can be quite difficult and frustrating for both the physicians as well as patients and family members. And often they have to deal with the false idea that there is nothing to do for a patient with MSA. From the physician perspective, we do have a limited amount of time that we can spend with each patient. And that's for many reasons, not only a financial pressure to see more patients in less time, but also because of the long wait lists that most neurology uh, centers and academic institutions currently have. And as we can expect, uh, it's quite difficult to deal with all the problems, with all the complaints and all the, the different uh, range of manifestations in a patient with MSA in a short visit. Uh, we have also become super specialized in neurology, which uh, can sometimes be difficult to manage other uh, organs or other systems that are not necessarily neurological. And we live in a, in a system that is very compartmentalized. And uh, it makes it also challenging for us to be able to freely talk and discuss cases with other specialties, uh, urology, physical therapy, we know that the medical system is not designed in the best way to allow this clear and effective communication between teams. And finally, being a rare disease, it is not easy to find 
uh, healthcare professionals that have the expertise in treat and manage multiple system atrophy. Here, I just wanted to show a map of the United States and the supply and demand for neurologists. And uh, it's very likely that if you're watching this uh, talk from the US, you're probably in an area where they have a higher demand uh, for neurologists than the available supply. As you can see here in pink, most of the states uh, currently have more demand for neurologists than available supply. And the authors also showed additional pictures and uh, expectations that in the future, this is only going to get worse. And we're going to have even more demand for neurologists. And if we try to extrapolate that for movement disorders, neurologists, or even autonomic disorders, neurologists, I I'm not sure if we have any data on that, but I can expect that this would be even worse and would have even a greater demand than the available supply. Therefore comes the idea of creating MSA centers of excellence. By definition, those would be the highest academic standards for MSA care. And that what it would mean is that it would be a medical center with a specialized team of experts in MSA. It would be the place where they would combine multiple healthcare professionals that have the expertise in not only the correct diagnosis of multiple system atrophy, but also being available to take care through all the stages of the disease from the very early stages until the very advanced stages and the potentially advanced care and so on. And ideally, the centers would also have a very heavy and solid integrated research component. Here's a picture of what a uh, current appointment might look like in many countries, including the US. Uh, there is a waiting room that is quite busy. Those patients can wait for months, uh, sometimes even years, depending on where you are, to see a neurologist. And then they wait, they go see a neurologist for a few minutes, they get a referral perhaps to a physical therapist, urologist, palliative care physician. And then they have to go back home wait a few more months and do it all over again. And then it becomes quite difficult if you have limited mobility, if you have challenges in, in, in moving around, as we can expect. And if we could imagine the ideal scenario for someone with multiple system atrophy, uh, we could see something like the MSA Center of Excellence where the patient would be the center of the care. And that is also quoting Dr. Michael Okun that suggests that the patient should be the son and the doctors and healthcare providers should be gravitating around the sun like stars. So hopefully we would be able to create centers where patients ideally stay in their own room and healthcare providers would be alternating and rotating and seeing the patient almost at the same time. And this way, patients would be able, within one clinic visit, to see multiple healthcare providers at the same time. And this would also allow a better integration of the care as you would have a simultaneous meeting between all these healthcare providers. And if we can imagine how this would look like and which providers would be in this clinic, we can we can draw some, some potential expectations here. The neurologist is uh, obviously one of the figures of this clinic. It could be either a movement disorders neurologist or autonomic disorders neurologist, or even better, both of them, that would be responsible for the diagnosis and also for the treatment of patients with MSA. The figure of the nurse practitioner would be the one coordinating the care of this patient, helping with appointments, helping with phone calls, questions, refills, and also uh, being able to manage and coordinate all the other pieces of this clinic at a very uh, institutional level as well. If we are considering the broad range of manifestations of MSA, we also need additional providers to help us with that. For example, 
a speech and swallowing therapist could help not only managing uh, dysartria or slurred speech, uh, as well as uh, dysphagia or difficulty swallowing, but also help patients in case they need additional communication devices in case communication is limited. Ideally, we could also have dietitians that would help patients develop their best diet in terms of calorie intake. For their mobility and locomotion, we could have physical therapists and occupational therapists that would work together to find the best ways of these patients to being safe, avoiding falls, and also being able to find the best device for them. As we know, MSA can also involve the respiratory symptoms, and in some cases also uh, strider and later on difficulty breathing as well. Therefore, the importance of respiratory therapies that can be consulted if needed. And to deal with uh, all the complications and difficulties uh, in the care of this uh, disease, a psychologist and palliative care physician could provide additional support, not only for the patient, but also for their caregivers. And finally, the figure of a social worker would also be extremely important in helping the patient and the family navigating some of the social aspects of the disease. Here, I just wanted to briefly include some of the evidence behind a few of these uh, therapies. Uh, here is a small prospective trial demonstrating some improvement in motor function uh, with physiotherapy for patients with MSA type P. We also have some mild benefit in dysartria or speech uh, with uh, intensive speech therapy for MSAC as demonstrated by this Japanese group. The benefits of the MSA clinic are some of them quite obvious in short term, like improving patient care, but many of them we think that can provide long-term care benefits to patients and the scientific community. As I mentioned, the patient care is obvious by uh, having multiple professionals seeing the patient at the same time. As we don't have any disease-modifying therapy, the most that we can offer now is therapy and also symptomatic treatment. And hopefully by combining all these uh, professionals in one setting, we could uh, improve the quality of life of patients with MSA. Ideally, we would also involve residents, fellows, medical students in this MSA clinic, and we would then create and disseminate the care of uh, knowledge about MSA and hopefully train the next generation of physicians who can then move to different parts of the country or the continent and provide additional care for people with MSA. The other crucial component of this clinic is the research development. As we know, by being a rare disease, it can be quite challenging to include a large number of patients to have enough power to conduct an observational research or clinical trial. And by creating these centers of excellence, we could potentially combine all the centers and have a larger number of individuals with MSA. This way, it would be easier to demonstrate and to uh, gather more information in a very uh, granular way for patients with MSA. And this would also provide longitudinal data in multiple points along the way. And hopefully this uh, research development would allow us to develop better biomarkers and finally better therapies for people with multiple system atrophy. The development of uh, MSA centers of excellence would involve a peer review process by experts in the field of movement disorders, autonomic disorders. And the criteria that can be used potentially is the annual volume of patients with MSA, the ability of the center to provide care across the full spectrum of disease, and also the ability to perform clinical research, clinical trial, outreach, and education such as uh, uh, neurology residency or movement disorders or autonomic disorders fellowship. I just wanted to briefly demonstrate 
some similar experiences that uh, could help us creating this MSA Center of Excellence. ALS is probably one of the most obvious ones, uh, obvious one that has been uh, around for many years now and uh, actually became standard of care. And nowadays, many institutions actually have only the multidisciplinary ALS clinic. And this is one of the early studies demonstrating that patients that were followed in the multidisciplinary ALS clinic actually had better outcome compared to patients that were followed in a general neurology clinic, for example. Here, I also show the example of the Parkinson's disease centers of excellence. And this is uh, an effort by the Parkinson's Foundation. And while I cannot comment a lot on the clinical care, we don't have a lot of data on that, I can definitely show the good example in terms of research. The Parkinson's Foundation has created the Parkinson's Outcome Project in the Parkinson's Disease Centers of Excellence, and they, they were able to combine this data from all these uh, more than 20 centers. And to date, they have one of the largest ever clinical studies in Parkinson's disease with 13,000 patients uh, as of May of 2020. So here we can see the potential of combining efforts and creating this consortium to then gather more clinical data. We also have additional similar experiences in movement disorders, like the Huntington's Disease Clinic, which has actually also became standard of care in many institutions, including here at Washington University in St. Louis. In these clinics, patients are able to talk not only to the neurologist, but also to a geneticist and to a social worker. I would also like to highlight the Cure PSP in the PSP clinic that has been developed at Toronto Western Hospital and University of Toronto, led by Dr. Tony Lang and Dr. Kovacs, uh, in, in which they can combine not only the clinical care, but also the research portion in patients with progressive supranuclear palsy. There is also the European example of Parkinson Net, where they provide the multidisciplinary care for patients with Parkinson's disease. In multiple system atrophy, we do have initial developments. And here we have the clinics at UC, UT Southwestern, led by Dr. Vernino, which to my knowledge has developed the first MSA multidisciplinary clinic in North America. And uh, he has really paved the way in developing and creating this idea that patients with MSA can benefit from this multidisciplinary approach. And we also have Dr. Kuhn at Mayo Clinic in Minnesota that has subsequently created the multidisciplinary MSA clinic in 2019. The future directions of this project would be to obtain additional funding to support this clinic. As we can imagine, combining multiple care providers in only one setting is an expensive process and uh, would very likely need additional funding either from philanthropy or from research grants that might be able to pay you not only the human resources, but also the costs associated with research. We would also implement this program at a national level with independent certification for the MSA Centers of Excellence. And in this consortium, as I mentioned before, the centers of excellence would combine their clinical data, combine research efforts, and uh, many other possibilities. And hopefully, we would be able to share the experiences and the data with the scientific and patient community. I would also like to highlight this very important paper by Dr. Kuhn and Dr. Vernino from Mayo Clinic and UT Southwestern. Um, that have suggested some ideas of how to develop these centers of excellence. And it's quite a nice read that uh, delineates a lot of the efforts on, on and as well as the challenges of developing this MSA clinic. And I should also highlight that some foundations have also uh, uh, holding preliminary talks on how to develop these centers of excellence and how to better achieve this outcome that I have been discussing in my talk. 
with that, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention and uh, leave my email for any questions or suggestions. I would really enjoy hearing from you, hearing if you have any thoughts, any ideas of how to move this project forward, or if you would have any thoughts on how to collaborate. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to hearing from you.